Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you five different gift ideas using J-Diction UV Resin. I'm going to be using a variety of techniques, including some flame painting, which I'm absolutely in love with and obsessed with at the moment. So if you fancy watching that, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. Number one, flower key rings. In order to include five different projects in this video, I've kept my instructions to a minimum, but hopefully you'll be able to see quite clearly what I'm doing without too many instructions. For this first project, I snipped some dried foliage and some pressed flowers and immersed them in the J-Diction UV resin. Because I'm using the resin clear in this one, I've made it quite deep because the UV light will be able to get all the way through to cure it. If I had been using pigments or lots and lots of foliage, I would have done more shallow layers. The first thing I noticed about the J-Diction resin is that there's no smell. Well, I say there's no smell to it. There's minimal smell to it. Every time I've ever tried UV resin, and I've tried lots and lots of different ones, they do smell. Only for a little while, once you've, st once you've got it under the lamp and it started to cure, the smell goes. But, you know, some of them do smell quite strongly. But this one doesn't. Uh, there was just a, a slight smell, and that's the first thing that I really loved about it. For each of the five projects in this video, I've cut out the bit where I leave it under the UV lamp because obviously you don't want to sit there for two minutes every time. But I thought I should mention that it is two minutes each time that I cure something. Unless it's something really deep or with pigments in that, you know, then it would need a bit longer. But this one I did for two minutes. As you will have seen, this heart shape is in three layers and for this final layer, I've just put the UV resin in and I'm going to sprinkle some glitter on top to give it a bit of interest so that from behind there's some glitter but at the front there isn't any. I'm only doing a light sprinkling of glitter because obviously, and it's one thing a lot of people forget and I say obviously, some people it's, it's not so obvious so I will say if you're blocking the light from getting underneath anything it, w it won't cure the light won't get through it so you know if you're using glitter or pigments or anything like that you need to be mindful of whether the light can get through to you know the UV light can get through to cure because otherwise you're going to have problems <laughs> The thing I love so much about UV resin is it's so quick. You can make a project, something really beautiful, in a matter of minutes. I think this one from start to finish probably took me about 15 minutes. And I had a pendant for somebody as a Christmas gift. So yeah, that's why I love UV resin so much. If you've used UV resin before, you will be aware that sometimes it has a slight tackiness to it. You know, when you touch it when it's first being cured, it just feels a little bit tacky. Um, and I know a lot of people do get annoyed by that. It does have its own use, uh, the, the tackiness. It means, you know, you can put mica powder on and do other special effects onto that tackiness after it's finished and things will stick to it. So it can be handy. But most of the time, it's just annoying. <laughs> so all you need to do, if it's tacky, is wipe it down with isopropyl, alco isopropyl alcohol and the tackiness will go away. But one thing I have noticed about this resin is it doesn't get much of that happening at all. This is the only project where I got any tackiness at all. And like I say, I gave it a wipe with some rubbing alcohol and it was fine. 
Number two, the bubble effect pendant. So I'm using the same mould again because I, I really like that heart shaped mould and I decided to use the bubble effect for this one and it's one of my favourite things to do with UV resin is this bubble effect, it's so much fun. All you need is some water and some dish soap in a box or a tow ball, you know, something that you can shake with a lid on to make some bubbles. Then you just put your UV resin into your mould. I did mine about halfway up and then added the bubbles and put it under my UV lamp. After two minutes under the lamp, I took it out and I dried it with my hot air gun. You can use a hairdryer or anything just to dry away any excess moisture. And then I started to paint. I like to use metallic paints for this um, effect and I've used the Jacquard Lumia purple metallic paint for this one and then some of the pink in the middle from the same um, company, Jacquard. So yeah, I'm just brushing it all on into all the nooks and crannies and then I will let it dry. Isn't that bubble effect really good? I really love it. So remember this is the back of the finished piece and I want black behind the um, if the bubble effect because it makes the paint stand out more and so I added some of the black pigment from J Diction it's a liquid pigment and I will link the link I will leave the links in the description for everything I've used and when you're using pigment it's quite important to work in thin layers and you know cure several times otherwise like I said before the light won't get through but this is the finished result and I think it turned out lovely number three bubble effects earrings whilst I still had my bubbles out from the previous project I decided to just have a really quick go at making these earrings and they were really were the quickest of all my projects they were done in a matter of oh it must have been five minutes and they were done so I just found two round bezels from my jewellery supplies added some of the J Diction UV resin and put the bubbles on top just like before then cured it under the lamp and here you can see just how nicely the UV resin picks up the um, texture of the bubbles so well. I'm really loving this resin, I've got to say. So anyway, this time I'm using white and now then, what's the other one called? I think it's called Halo Blue Gold. I know it looks green, but it's one of those ones that kind of changes colour in the light. Blue gold, I think it's called, and it's great. And I'm kind of going to try and blend the two together. Once I'd finished painting, I just dried it out again with my heat gun. It's an embossing heat gun. You can use a hairdryer, like I said before. And then once it's dry, add your UV resin on the top. Make sure you go right to the edges. You can use a little pointy tool like I'm doing and then cure it under the lamp. Once they were cured, I just put some earring hooks on and I had a beautiful pair of earrings. Another stocking filler for Christmas. And again, there was no tackiness to the surface of the resin at all. So yeah, it gets the thumbs up from me, definitely. Number four, flame painted pendant. I'm fairly new to flame painting, but from what I have done, I've absolutely loved it. What I have here is some copper. It's a copper blank, just a blank pendant which you can buy. I had it in my um, supplies for enamelling. I Years and years ago, I had a go enamelling and I bought loads of copper blanks and then went on to a different... <laughs> Like I do, I got a different interest and my enamelling things all got put away. But I got them out again to find my copper blanks and started doing this because I think it's so good. All you need to do is use your kitchen torch over the copper and it will colour it. Now I make it sound very simple. It does need some practice. Um, 
I sh it, you know, if there's enough interest, I can do another video focusing just on doing this because there's quite a lot to tell you about it and I don't really have time in this video to do that. But you can see the results. How pretty is that? It's nearly finished. You just have to keep going back to it. and You have to allow it to cool, go back to it, allow it to cool again and go back. And the magic just happens before your eyes and it's so beautiful the effects that you get and then once that was done I could put the UV resin on top and the UV resin just enhanced that magical effect and made it look even better you just wait for a second and you'll see so when you're coating something with UV resin it's best to kind of make a puddle in the middle don't pour the resin right to the edge. Make a puddle and then take a tool, a pointed tool, a cocktail stick or something and just gently tease the resin to the edge and you will get a nice domed effect and this resin works really well for that and it's super clear as well. You can use a torch or a lighter to disperse any bubbles but I haven't used it much. I didn't find that there were many bubbles apparent so I didn't use it much here you can see I give it the quickest of blasts and that was it then two minutes under the lamp and it was ready again once it had cured I just added a pinch bale and it was ready to make into a necklace and just look at the colours isn't that amazing what what you can do with just a flame and some copper. There was nothing on that copper, nothing added to it. It was just copper and a flame and it does that. It's just absolutely magical and it's quite addictive. Once you get started doing it, you can't stop. So just a bit of a warning there for you. Number five, the flame painted dish. After seeing the results of the pendant, I kind of got hooked <laughs> and I went to find what else I had that I could flame and I found a little copper um, dish in my box of supplies and so I've cut it short for this one because I spent a long time on it. It was quite tricky. Um, the bigger the item gets that you're working with, it tends to get a bit trickier. Um, because once it heats up, the whole, all the colours change the hotter it gets. So you might get a beautiful colour on one side and then start heating the other side. But then, of course, the whole dish warms up and all the other colours start to change. So what I do is I put it in some cold water every now and again to cool it down before heating another part. And then you tend to keep the colours a bit better. It starts with like a copper colour when you start heating it. It goes from a copper and a pink to like a dark blue and then light blue. And after light blue, if you take it any further, the colour disappears altogether. So like I say, it's one of those things that you do need to work on and practice and get a feel for it. But once you do, you'll never turn back. You'll just be in love with it like I am. Okay, so I finally finished and as this is supposed to be a UV resin video, let's get on with the UV resin part. Now, as you can imagine, it's not such a straightforward shape to cut, but I did and it was absolutely fine. The way I did this was I just put it into the middle and then spread it up to the edges with my finger, making sure that it was going right up to the edge that's the most important part, making sure you've got no missing bits on the edge. And then once I'd spread it around everywhere, I just dabbed it all over with my finger. So lots of little pats with my finger and it kind of makes it a more even distribution. And it, you know, it stops you from getting puddles because obviously the shape of it, it could just pour down, back down and make a puddle in the middle. But if you're quite quick and you dab it all over, you avoid the puddles and you get a lovely clear finish like this. What do you think? I really love those colours. It reminds me of flowers, lots of different spring flowers. That's what it reminds me of. Or... 
even a peacock, peacock kind of colours too. I just love it. Anyway, let me know what you think in um, the comments. I'd love to know what you think. And if you would like a proper tu tutorial just about the flame painting, because it is quite interesting. So, there we have our five easy UV resin gift ideas and I hope it's given you some inspiration or some ideas of what you could do with the Christmas season approaching us so quickly. I will leave the links to the J Diction products which I use today in the description along with the discount code because I would really recommend it. The results were so clear and there was very little smell or tackiness. So all round, very good. I would highly recommend it. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's inspired you. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you could do so and give it a thumbs up. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.